Hey, beautiful people, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant, and this is The Other Side of the Dash. Welcome back to The Other Side of the Dash. I'm your host, Yolanda Johnson Bryant. If you're new here, take a moment to hit that subscribe button. If you're following via YouTube, if you are listening to me via podcast, you can follow me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor FM, or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. So again, welcome back to the show. And today is going to be an interesting topic. I'm going to be talking about alopecia. So at the Oscars, rapper and actor Will Smith slapped comedian Chris Rock and shouted obscenities in the middle of the Oscars ceremony after Chris had teased Jada Pinkett Smith, who is Will Smith's wife, about her shaven head. So the supposed reason is, or the supposed reason for the joke to my understanding is she looked like G.I. Jane and, and Chris was teasing. He's a comedian about doing G.I. Jane 2. I believe uh, Demi Moore did G.I. Jane 1 and she shaved her head. However, the reason for this black was Jada suffers from alopecia, according to Jada. I'm not going to say much about this incident because I'm so over it. I have my opinions, but my opinions don't matter. You know, that's those people. I'm the, I'm this person over here. So, uh, you know, I got my own life to live. I'm not trying to comment too much outside my home walls <laughs> uh, about what's going on in Hollywood. But anyway, I will say that I don't think the situation was prop, uh, handled properly, but we'll let that go. So again, um, the main reason why I'm doing this particular show is it's a shame that it took violence, cloudiness over the Oscar uncalled for behavior or whatever you want to say to bring light to alopecia. And I say to alopecia and not Jada Pinkett Smith's alopecia, and that's not trying to throw shade at her, but I'm just wanting to say Jada Pinkett Smith is not the first Black woman to have alopecia. Jada Pinkett Smith is not the first woman ever, you know, whether Black, white, or indifferent to have alopecia. But I did want to talk about it because as many of you have followed me for any length of time, or even those who may not know, I suffer from alopecia. A lot of my Black sisters that I know, even some men suffer from alopecia. So I just wanted to talk about it without the negative overtones of the Oscar. First of all, if you don't know, many of you know, and if you didn't know before the Oscars, you probably know now because you probably looked it up. For those don't know, don't, who don't know, what is alopecia? So alopecia is an autoimmune disease that develops when the body attacks its hair follicles and can cause hair loss all over the body, especially the head. So you heard me say all over the body. So in some cases, people don't just lose it over on their head. So a lot of times people will tease people who have no eyebrows and they have to draw them in or tattoo them in or whatever. Well, it affects that as well. So it's not just your, you know, your top of your head. It can happen over the entire parts of your body. And I believe I have it on my legs because y'all, I never have to shave my legs. People complain about hair. That's one thing I've never had to shave was my legs. So I possibly believe that I have it there, but I definitely have it, you know, on my head. There are several types of alopecia, including areata. And please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this right. Arietta, that's A-R-E-A-T-A, Totalist, T-O-T-A-L-I-S, and Universalist, U-N-I-V-E-R-S-A-L-I-S. The most common of those are the Arietta. So signs of alopecia Arietta are thinning hair, bald spots, receding hairlines, thinning or bald edges, and, and so on. So alopecia areata can appear on parts of the body such as eyelashes, eyebrows, beards, arms, legs, and other parts of the body. For the sake of this show, I want to concentrate on the hair loss on the head, especially in women also suffer from alopecia. But right now we are talking about women. I just felt more empowered to talk about women, especially Black women, and the struggle we have with our hair. I'm sorry, my Caucasian sisters, you guys have it easy. 
or some of you, I'm, I realize some of you probably struggle, but we just can't wash our hair and go. <laughs> so if you ever take the time to watch a uh, natural hair video, you'll see that the process of caring for natural hair takes several hours, if not an entire weekend and, and so on. So just to understand. So the next time you ask, can I touch your hair? And you wonder why we look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so if you follow me for any amount of time, you already know that I've been very open to the reasons why I started wearing braids, weaves, and now wigs. I've had alopecia for at least 20 years now. Actually, I think it's actually been longer than it, y'all. I think it's been longer. But at any rate, it started with thinning edges, uh, then receding hairline, and then bald patches. I can't say whether or not my particular situation is hereditary. I will say that my mother suffered from alopecia, but it was my understanding that she had a car accident when she was younger, and it caused her hair to fall out. She wore wigs for as long as I can remember. And then after that, she started going to the beautician, and she, they finally got her hair to grow back. I don't know the full details. Let's just put it that way. I don't know the full details behind that. I can only go by what I was told. So again, I don't know if it's in my family genes, but my total alopecia event came from medical illnesses, medical treatments, and medications. And I'd be lying if I didn't say that braiding, weaving, and perming my hair didn't add to the already growing problem. So like a lot of Black women back in the day, and some probably still do it. I know a lot do it under the care of a beautician. But back in the day, we would throw a perm in our hair and the same day throw the dye or vice versa, like one right after the other. That's not good for your hair either. But I, I'm, I'm guilty of doing that. I'm guilty of doing all kinds of things to my hair. But ultimately, the hair loss became really prevalent when I started having medical issues and diagnosis and medications and things after that. So going further back, so I braided my, I kept my hair braided. It was just so convenient braiding my hair as opposed to getting up every day. You know, if I had a perm, I had to make sure I had did this and did that in order to make sure it didn't get dry and brittle and break off. Or, you know, I just, natural hair at that time was not, was not for me. So I kept my hair braided. It was easy. It was versatile and I looked cute. <laughs> so it was something that I did all the time. Now I'll say that I did uh, occasionally get, like I said, the perms. Back then uh, in the 80s when I was in high school, curls, we call them curls. You guys, you Caucasians, your brothers and sisters, you guys call them perms. We call them curls because our perms was to get our hair straight. Your perms were to get your hair curly. So we had curls and perms. So this also made it easy to manage my hair. Uh, but you know, back then the perms were, or they consisted of the harsh lies and other chemicals. I think some still do this day, but I think some you can get that don't. But look, I'm just going to tell you, honestly, if you can, just go to a beautician. They know what they're doing. They're training what they're doing. So if you want to get dyes, if you don't want your hair to break out, look, unless you unless you know exactly what you're doing, because I know there are some people I watch on YouTube, they know what they're doing because, you know, they do a good job at it. Their hair is healthy and thriving. But then there's others that's like, OK, I should not have done this. Just just be careful when you're doing this. So I went from perms to wearing weaves. And so my very first weave was, how old was I got my first weave? I got my first weave when I was, I believe, 17 years old. Was I 17 or 18? I was actually 18 because I was in college. And all I got was like two pieces put in the front and two pieces put in the back. That was my first one. And, and of course, it started to, if you don't take care of them or get them tightened on a regular basis, they start to, the tension starts to, especially if you don't take care of you, that's another problem that Black women have. They'll do all these protective styles or these other creative styles, but they don't take care of the hair underneath. And I am certainly, certainly guilty of that. So the tension started to break at my edges, you know, again, making them thin, but I got them back. But, you know, doing it over and over again, it becomes a little bit more permanent. And then, so I stopped with the sewing uh, weave and got the glue weave, all oh, which my God is worse than actually the sewing in my opinion, because you're having to pull that tape off your hair and your hair comes out with it. So on. So yes, we as black women, we have lots of issues and a love hate relationship with our hair. So now, right now I wear wigs all the time. So for the most part, I don't do what they call an install with my wigs. I will put a, a band on it and tighten it down, maybe with some hairspray or some mousse and go on about my business. But 
there are times, depending on what the event is, if I'm going swimming on vacation or I'm somewhere where I know it's going to be windy or whatever, I will, or if I'm going just, you know, whatever, I'm, I will install it. And install it basically means using some form of, of adhesive to bond it to your head. Um, what we'll do is we'll wear, wear a uh, stocking cap over our real hair, some of us, and we will glue the wig down. Or sometimes people will even sew the wig. I think I glued my wig once. There was a particular incident I had maybe about a year ago. My family and I currently live in North Texas, but we were living in North Carolina at the time. And we had drove down to North Texas to look for our house to be built. And I had installed my wig with glue. It's called Ghost Bond. And the hair that I got, I found out that I was kind of like allergic to the fibers. And it started burning my hair, burning my scalp. I mean, I was just in pain. I was in the shower trying to get it out. Oil would not make it come out, nothing. So what I realized was that I did not buy the adhesive remover. So whenever you buy glue, make sure you buy the adhesive remover with it. I was, oh God, I was in so much pain. So my husband went to the CVS by the hotel and got some alcohol and I was dousing my head in alcohol and it, it came off with the alcohol. I don't foresee me unless something major happens where I have to glue it in. I don't foresee me doing that, but there are other ways to bond. And I use this product called Got To Be Glued and people live by it. You can get it in the black or the yellow container, but uh, you can either, it's like gel, it's like bonding gel, but it'll come off with soap and water or with oils or whatever. And I just found this new one. It's called Wonder Lace Bond Spray. And it works. That's the, your hair is not going anywhere. Now, it, it is water soluble, the one that I use. So all I do is get a wet towel and with a little friction with some with a little soap and just kind of wipe it and it will come off. That's probably as about as, as much as I will go because I don't wear my wigs full time. When I'm at home with my family, I'll walk around without my wigs. So I do have a little hair under it, but I say a little. Most of my hair is around the sides and the back. It's very thin and nearly bald in the top and the front, and it's very thin on the edges. So what I'll just do is just either wrap it and walk along with my hair wrapped, or I'll just wear a silk scarf over it, or whatever the case may be. I do wear wigs as opposed to braids or anything else. I, I am 100% wig, wig wearer. Now, as I stated before, my account of alopecia started with thinning edges. When it moved to the top of my head, my scalp was very sensitive and inflamed, you guys. So I started to get these bumps on the top of my head. They turned into blisters and my scalp was just red and it just, it was painful. I got to the point that the only product that I could put on the area was either Vaseline or Neosporin because it burned so bad. And eventually I started to get painful blisters. Finally realized that I was going to have to give up braids and convert to just wearing wigs. Now, I only wore the wigs when I was in public because I did not want to kill the rest of the hair that I did have. So here I am thinking my situation was getting better. Uh, my hair started to grow back, but I made the grave mistake of putting a perm in it and wearing my real hair with a couple of tracks, which are weaves, here and there. I began noticing that my hair was falling out at the crown around the edges and the hair on the top of my head just completely fell out. I had what I called a George Jefferson. Y'all know the George Jefferson when it's bald on top and he got hair around the sides and the back. And then I noticed that my follicles started to close completely. So before you could see the hair follicles. And I, I, I was told that if you can still see the hair follicles, there's a good chance your hair you know, can, can grow back. But if there are no follicles, there's nothing for the hair to grow, back, grow out of. Now I'm going to digress on that only to say that I don't know because my hair follicles are gone, but lately I'm starting to see, I've started to see hairs come out of that, that area where there is no follicles. So I don't know. I don't, y'all, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. So I ended up going to a dermatologist, uh, but that was unsuccessful. Even though the doctor was well-versed in forms of alopecia, she wasn't very well-versed in black hair. After seeing a couple of people feeling very down because no one could help me, I gave up trying. But when I moved to North Carolina, I was at work at an African-American medical practice. And one of the doctors that I worked for, uh, she referred me to an African-American dermatologist. 
And y'all, I'm telling y'all the truth. You know, I was ignorant back then. I had no idea that African-American the dermatologist even existed. Had I known, I would have been going to one a lot sooner. So when I went for my appointment, I took my wig off to show the doctor what I was dealing with. And she immediately, look, she looked at my head. She didn't touch it. She didn't nothing. She just said, I can't help you. She said, your hair, your hair will never grow back. And then she kind of like dismissed me. And I'm like pleading with her that surely there was something that she could do to help me or some suggestions, whatever, to help me get my hair to grow back. And she told me that the only suggestion that she had would be surgical implants, for which my insurance was not going to cover. I'm not sure uh, of today's prices for implants, but then it was thousands of dollars. I left her office feeling very, very defeated, y'all. Um, I was hurt. And I had come to the conclusion that as long as God made wigs available, I was going to wear them and call it a day. I had other issues. People have other issues. If hair is the least of my issues, hey, I'll wear a wig any day. And I will say, I was never deceptive about my wig wearing. So a lot of people would say, oh, she's trying to act like that's her real hair. Or some people would come by because I, I, I did my hair my wigs look really natural. I mean, there's probably a couple here and there that you could tell it was like wiggy looking, but I try to always make it a point to make my hair natural. And people will come up to me and some would do it just to be shady. Oh, who did your hair? And I'll be like, I did. Oh, really? How much did that cost you to get done? And I say, uh, $99.99, you know, at this store or whatever. And they would look at me like, I can't believe she was that honest. You know, I can't believe you were trying to be that shady either. But um, no, I was never... Uh, I never hid the fact I, I, I was hoping that I could be one is it, it was just the cards that that were dealt me and one I was hoping I could be a testimony to someone because there are a lot of people that I had talked to who had it that were just so embarrassed and they just spent time worried about this and you know they had other issues they were letting fall by the wayside I'm like that's not very important you know as long as you know and we as time has evolved and even now Wigs are getting more and more natural looking and cute. And because, you know, back like that, we had our grandma's wig. And, you know, I took those and rocked those too and made them look like my own. But, you know, now they're more natural. People are making their own wigs and, you know, things like that. So, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not ashamed about it because back when I was 29, my doctor told me I would not see my 29th birthday. Y'all, I'm going to be 53, Laura Wells, in two months. You know what? I am not even tripping on it. Like I said, when people ask me about it and they find out that, you know, it's not my real hair, I'm like, well, technically, you know, I paid for it. So I got the receipt for it. So it's my hair. Um, and then I would get you Caucasian sisters who would be like, oh, can I touch your hair? No, you cannot touch our hair. Love y'all, but please do not ask a Black woman, can you touch her hair? And please do not go in to touch a Black woman's hair because uh, you do not touch a Black woman's hair. If you, if you like it, just say, I like your hair and just keep it moving, whatever. Um, but do not ask and definitely do not touch a black woman's hair. That's like touching a black woman's child. Mm. Need I say more? But like I said, some of the most hurtful things came from my melanated sisters. You know, like I said earlier, well, she knows that's not her hair and she's trying to make it seem like that's her hair. What am I supposed to do? Put on my wig and just go out and say, everybody, I have a wig on just so you be transparent, it's a wig. First of all, it's none of your business. And two, the, you know, this is my head. Worry about what you're doing over there. But uh, like I said, it did hurt to hear my own talking about it, knowing that a lot of people in our in our community are, are going, you know, through this issue. But I digress on that. So from the beginning, I had a knack for choosing and styling wigs. Like I said, I felt if I had to wear them, I was going to put my, put my touch on them and, and make them look as natural as possible. Like I said, I didn't ask for this disease, just like I didn't ask for fibromyalgia. I didn't ask for my diabetes. I didn't ask for my arthritis. I didn't ask for my heart disease. I didn't ask for my anemia and the other health issues I'm dealing with right now. So I'm just making the best of it. Um, I could spend time feeling bad or sad about it, but instead I choose to focus on things that are more important and just thanking God for the positive things in my life. Okay, so let's go back to what I said earlier so sad that it took an act of violence and a rich and famous person for this to be brought to the public forefront. And I take nothing away from Jada's experience and what she has had to go through. But again, we as Black women have been suffering from this autoimmune disease for years. I just hope that now the medical community will take a closer look at it and put more efforts towards 
causes and cures. Uh, and I, when I say causes and cures, I don't mean just medications that, you know, to make the pharmaceutical companies rich because they're quick to do that. Something that's actually going to make a difference. There are many symptoms and signs of alopecia areata to include, but not limited to itchiness, burning, flaky scalp, tenderness, swelling, blistering, and sores. And I had all those, you guys, all of them. When I say I had, but only on my head, like I said, I have alopecia in my eyebrows, but um, I didn't have any of the other symptoms and just the balding. And look, as long as they make an eye pencil, I will draw that sucker in. <laughs> and like I said, my legs, I've never had to really shave my legs. I've been cool um, as far as that goes. So it's important to mention that stress causes alopecia as well. And you guys, I have been a stressful person since I can remember. I remember being a child and being stressed out a lot because that was just the kind of environment that I was in. My nerves were just always bad and I was just always stressed out. And I just brought that into uh, adulthood. Stress is one of the things that will help your hair fall out. So I will say this. If your hair is falling out, look at your stress life. If you are stressing and your hair is falling out, that could be the reason. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have alopecia. It could just mean that stress is just causing your hair to fall out and you might need to find some ways to become less stressed. But I would go definitely go to a doctor before I start thinking that I have alopecia. And I would probably get a second opinion because, you know, quick to go to the doctor and they say, oh yeah, you got this. Let me treat it. So look, I'm sorry. I'm just not very trusting of doc doctors these days. I'm just saying, just make sure it's what it is before you go trying to treat it or you start start worrying about it's not going to grow back or whatever the case may be. Interestingly enough, per WebMD, alopecia can affect fingernails and toenails. And then more hair loss can be found in colder weather. I found that kind of interesting. They also state that although doctors do not know why the immune system goes into attack, attack mode, medications, stress, childbirth, physical trauma. So physical trauma, going back to when I told you guys earlier, they said my mother had fallen out of a car while it was moving. So physical trauma, restrictive dieting, asthma, and hay fever can be key causes. And I found it interesting that they also state that thyroid issues can be a cause which also causes unexplained weight changes, higher low energy and menstruation changes. So you guys know I'm dealing with this issue and I'm gonna be having surgery next week on, on these fibroids that have been making my life miserable for years. So I'm wondering, is this all a result? So I add all this because every time I go in for a checkup, I'm asked, when was the last time I had my thyroid checked? Because I suffer from all of the above. And surprisingly, each time my thyroid workup comes back, it's normal. This is why it's important to get that annual physical and annual blood workup. And going back to second opinions, I would strongly suggest second opinions. I am going to be getting a second opinion because I believe thyroid issues fall in my family. And every time I go, I'm told I don't have it. Now, look, thank you, Jesus, if I don't have it. But if you do have it and you, they're saying you don't and it's untreated, you can have a multitude of other problems. So I'm not trying to call that into existence. I just want to make sure that, you know, everything is okay. So even though I have come to accept that my hair may never grow back, I think back to when my mother's hair grew back after all those years. So I do pray, grow my hair back. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. I have provisions, they're wigs. <laughs> so thank God for them and thank God for the advancement of wigs the versatility of wigs, and that alone makes it not such a big deal for me. If I know it's going to be windy and I'm going somewhere, I just tack that sucker down, you know. At any rate, like I said, I, there are a lot of other things that uh, I could be worried about or other issues I could deal with. Alopecia is not going to be one of them. Not to say I'm not going to continue to try to take care of the hair I have, because I do. I do condition it, deep condition it, wash it on a regular basis, oil it, do what I need to do. And, and I'm always on the lookout for people who suggest Certain things, you know, I, I can't tell you how much money I spend on various products trying to get my hair to grow back. Maybe one day one will work. Maybe it won't. We'll see. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at any rate, I, I, like I said, I just hate that it took what happened. So like I said, I've had, I said 20, but I think I've had my alopecia probably for 30 some odd years. But it, it's, it's a, sh a shame that it took 30 years later or even because, you know, there are people who had it before. 
before me, before I was even born, you know, going back to my mom, you know, people before her who have had un undiagnosed alopecia. So it just is sad that it took a situation like this to make people start talking about it. And that's one thing I don't like about the world as it, it is. It takes some kind of tragedy, some kind of drama, some kind of Hollywood stunt or whatever for serious things to be brought to light. And, and that's sad. If you are, if you suffer from alopecia or you know someone who suffers from alopecia, I would love to talk to you and have you on a future podcast. If you have any questions or comments about alopecia, feel free to put them down in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. If you're listening to this on YouTube in the comments below, or, you know, take a moment and just shoot me an email at info at other side of the dash. And um, I'd be happy to have a conversation for you with you. I'm sorry. And maybe we can talk about resolutions, uh, treatments, what may have worked for someone. I realize one thing is not going to work for everybody, but it might work for somebody. Let's, let's reach someone and help people who are suffering from this same issue who may think that they don't have any options. There are options out there. We just have to have people on your side who are going to be supporting you and, and, and helping you. So I, again, I want this to be a platform where we can help each other, help each other thrive. And a lot of people, especially women over 50, do suffer from alopecia. I want to use this platform to try to help you overcome any issues you may have within the, the, the control of of the show or you know, your peers or whatever because you know we're no doctors we're no lawyers we're no whatever the case may be or financial advisor although we'll be talking about those types of things so I used to be a former stockbroker so you know there's a few tips I can give I'm not a financial advisor so I'm on keto I have health issues I know some things that work for me but I'm not a doctor but Look, we're here to help each other, try to provide some resources or whatever. Again, if you have any comments on alopecia, please leave them in the show notes. If you're listening on the podcast or on YouTube, leave them in the comments or email me at info at other side of the dash. So I think we've come to the end of this episode. And I think I really would have loved to have had a guest. So again, if you want to be a guest and we can talk about this, please contact me. And so this platform is for women over 50. But if you're a younger woman that has alopecia, I would love to talk to you too, because even though this is for women over 50, look, if you're 20, 30 years old, 40 years old, and you've had alopecia, you, we can all still learn from that. So go ahead and contact me and we can set up a future show for that, you guys. This is probably going to be the last show for a minute. And I'm going to be in recovery for about six to eight weeks, but I'll talk more about that on the life update videos. And with that being said, I'm Yolanda Johnson-Bryan, and this has been The Other Side of the Dash.